We begin tonight from Damaturu, the Yobi state capital, where residents have spent the better part of the day in fear and anxiety as the city came under attack from those believed to be members of the terrorist group Boko Haram. The attack started around 5.30 p.m. along Gashua Road near the police state headquarters with sporadic gunshots renting the air, making many of the residents to flee their homes for safety. Shortly after, fighter jets were seen hovering around the city. The spokesman of Operation Lafia Dole, Captain Njoka Irabo, who confirmed the attack to Channel's television, however, says security operatives have successfully forced the insurgents to withdraw from the city. Still on security and in the North Central region, at least eight persons are feared dead from bandits' attack on Kaure Community Kwaki Ward in Shiroro local government area of Niger State. According to the councillor representing the area, Jafaru Kwaki, the attacks which occurred in the early hours of Saturday also left several persons critically injured and many displaced from their homes. He says information about the attacks only got to him on Sunday as the affected community is a remote one. According to Mr. Kwaki, the armed men dressed in black came on motorbikes and began shooting sporadically, leaving eight persons dead, several cows rustled, while vehicles and houses were also burnt. This is the third time this month that armed men have attacked communities in Shiroro local government area of the state. The police authorities in the state are yet to confirm the attack. Meanwhile, with just a few days to this year's Christmas and New Year celebrations, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, says he is not leaving anything to chance as he has directed Assistant Inspectors General of Police, State Commissioners, to provide the much needed security for a hitch free celebration. While reiterating his call for effective deployment of both human and material assets of the force in protecting the major highways, recreational centres, motor parks, places of worship, financial institutions, governments and private infrastructures among others, the police chief also mandates the supervisory officers to ensure that they are personally on ground to monitor and supervise the officers and men under their watch for optimal performance. He also warns police operatives, especially those detailed, to man the highways to desist from all forms of misconduct and abuse of the rights of the citizenry and to adhere strictly to lay down rules and standard operating procedures of the force. More on security now. The plight of a young lady who was recently cut down in her prime by criminals has once again brought to fore the question of how medical personnel and institutions should attend to victims of crime in the country. In this special report, our correspondent, Dari Do, captures some of the security challenges and healthcare delivery system through the story of Moradeo Balogun, who was attacked on her way home from work and allegedly rejected at a private hospital in Lagos. Like many states in the country, Lagos is fighting violent crimes, with assaults on the roads and armed robbery in traffic still prevalent in many places. On a particular Monday evening, Ms. Muradion Balogun closed from work in Gagada area of Lagos, but became a victim of armed robbery and also a casualty of insecurity. Past seven, like seven eleven, um, someone just called me that. Um, Are you Mr. Basi? Um, Maradion has been stabbed and she was robbed. Uh, please make your way down. I said, We are Bagada. Bali lit roads like this one, where Ms. Balogun was attacked that evening, could be a safe place for pedestrians in daytime, but a lonely, scary place to walk when night falls like this one, making it easy for knife-wedden hoodlums who take advantage of the darkness to attack unsuspecting pedestrians. But what are authorities doing about this? We have commenced investigation into that case, and um, we did not just stop at that. There is this special tax uh, strike force that the CP has established to deal with uh, those social miscreants. You know, they operate under different names. Some of them call themselves Awawa boys, uh, one million boys, no salary boys. These are boys that hang around streets and neighborhoods, attacking people, extorting money from them, snatching their phones and valuables. At the residence of late Miss Balogun, a picture stands by the condolence register at the entrance of the living room, apparently left dark to reflect the mood.
The bereaved father sits in one of the inner spaces, deep in his thoughts, dealing with his sense of loss and grief. We were at Jollard Hospital. I left. I left home. On the way, I called again. I said, look, where are you? They then said, they are moving to the general hospital. I was a little bit skeptical. Then I had to say, can I speak to my daughter, please? And then I called her name. Muradion, is that you? I said, yes. And then the next thing she said, Daddy, I am dying. The case has also been picked up by the House of Representatives. She was rushed by patriotic citizens around to our Jolad Hospital, which was the nearest hospital to the scene of the attack. But unfortunately, she was refused medical attention, resulting in her untimely death due to excessive loss of blood. The hospital has denied this allegation. Its management, who would not speak on camera, says its doctors assessed and referred her for immediate attention of a vascular surgeon at the general hospital. One of our problems is um, the uncertainty of sanction. There should be a sanction. This sort of attitude should be criminalized. Feelings of sadness may fade as time passes, but for this man, he wants closure on this case, hoping that the circumstances around the death of his daughter does not repeat itself. Dari Idu, Channel Television News. Such a painful loss. May her soul and others like her rest peacefully. To more stories now, the federal government has rejected the U.S. designation of Nigeria as a country that engages in or tolerates severe violations of religious freedom. In a statement, the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, dismisses the iniquitous tag as stemming from an orchestrated narrative that has long been discredited, insisting that Nigerians enjoy unfettered freedom to practice their religion. The minister blames those he describes as failed politicians and disgruntled elements for latching on to religion as their trump card, especially in the run-up to the last general elections to oust the Buhari administration. According to the statement, the deliberate effort to give religious coloration to the farmers' herders' clashes and the Boko Haram insurgency in particular has undoubtedly helped to mislead the U.S. into concluding that the government is doing little or nothing to guarantee religious freedom in the country. Mr. Mohammed adds that the government has succeeded in curbing the farmers' herders' clashes just as it is, has largely defeated the Boko Haram insurgency. In the meantime, the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, is not on the same page with the federal government on this subject. In fact, the body says it welcomes the placing of the country on the special watch list, although it was not contacted before the decision was taken. CAN, in a statement, says while the body is not happy that Nigeria is being listed among the nations where religious intolerance is one of its hallmarks, it is gratifying to note that the global community is not unaware of the fact that Nigerian Christians are becoming endangered species in their fatherland. The leadership of the association says it had informed President Muhammadu Buhari about the matter in all its meetings with him to see the whole country as his constituency and to avoid nepotism as much as possible. According to the statement, 95% of those being detained terrorists are Christians and the government has been paying lip service towards securing their freedoms. While commending the United States for standing on the side of the oppressed, CAN advises the federal government to let its policies be implemented according to the dictates of the Constitution. If the war against corruption currently being waged by the current federal government is to succeed, President Mohamed Buhari's top aides will have to be more involved. That's the view of the founder and president Kingsway International Christian Centre, KICC, Pastor Matthew Eshimolowo. He told Channel Television's Ladia Kiridulwale on our current affairs programme, Newsnight, that it is the presidential aides who have to develop systems and mechanisms that will make it very difficult for corruption to thrive in the country. The president has good intentions. The president has a good passion. But in my opinion, the president is 
just like any good leader should be, must have a helicopter view of what he wants. But the microcosms should be dealt with by the subordinates under him. If the president says, I want a government that kills corruption, then the people around him should now come up with the systems that make corruption difficult. We need those who will take the vision of the president and turn it to systems, so that even if you wanted to do it, you were not allowed. You see, wherever there is disorder, you cannot kill corruption. For you to kill corruption, you must create order. And so, and people who like corruption hate your order. That is the thing. You will find that if you tell a man, use systems in this place, you say, ah, it's not going to work because he knows that it will preclude him. So what are we saying? Corruption can be stopped. Companies should be also such that there should be small, small companies. You are a trader by the roadside. You didn't just set up a trade. There's a system whereby we knew where we were. Our national identification system should work. So, that, for example, if a person committed a crime in Lagos and he moves to Gombe, you can never see him. Only a mistake will make you see him. We have, we have no system to capture this person. So when we talk corruption, the passion of the president is so right. But there is a need for a system that makes the helicopter view of the president captured at a microcosm level. For the full interview with Pastor Ashimolowo, do watch Newsnight tomorrow, Monday, December the 23rd, only on channels televisions, terrestrial, online, and channels 24 platforms. And to the power sector, the Nigerian Society of Engineers have identified inadequate regulation and enforcement by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission as one of the factors responsible for what it describes as a crisis in the Nigeria electricity market. Addressing a news conference in Abuja, the president of the society, engineer Babagana Mohamed, explains that infrastructure gaps in power, roads, railways, waterways, ports, and gas pipelines coupled with poor access to finance is impacting negatively on the micro, small, and medium enterprises' ability to survive. The federal government presidential executive order five to be passed into an act of parliament. Two, immediate implementation of cost-reflective tariff structure from the review of multi-year tariff order by Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC. Prioritization of power supply for industrial use above domestic consumption. Four, creation of special purpose vehicle for improvement expansion of electricity infrastructure and revenue collection from consumers, while the existing Jenkos, Discos, and transmission company would only be responsible for operation and maintenance of the facilities as a long-term plan. Five, all players in the power sector should show more patriotism in discharging their responsibilities to Nigerians. Six, the power sector bilateral trade with other countries should commence immediately. Seven, transmission rehabilitation and expansion program should be sustained. Eight, government should reduce intervention funding in favor of private sector investment for discourse to address structural challenges in a sustainable way.